Um, praise God for this nice Christmas season. Um, I hope that we all can make it to the Christmas program. I'm excited for that. Sandra's put a lot of hard work into that and the children, so that's going to be really great. I'm looking forward to that. And um, also, um, we have the prayer call tonight at uh, 645, so if anyone wants to join that too, uh, it's always a blessing to be able to pray together. So at this time, uh, before we begin our message, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this Christmas season when we can especially remember uh, your gift to us. Help us, Lord, to walk with you every day. I ask that you would help us as we study your word. Please hide us, hide me behind the cross, and may Jesus be seen uplifted and glorified. Lord, please help us to see Jesus more clearly and follow him more closely. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Please guide us with your spirit. Bless everyone here today. And I ask this in Jesus' name and according to his will we pray. Amen. Psalms 33, verse 6 and 9 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. My friends, God's word is powerful. When we look up into the stars, when we see all the different stars and planets, those stars, those planets, those galaxies that we see were made by Jesus. They were spoken into existence by God's word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. The sun, moon, and stars, the land, all these different things, they were made by God's word. God's word is so powerful. The same power that brought the worlds into existence, that made the stars and the galaxies, that same power is in God's word today. God's word is so incredibly powerful. We can trust it. We can live by it. When we open God's word, powerful things happen. Powerful things happen. Today, we're talking about the incredible gift of God's word. During Christmas time, we talk about gifts. But what better gift could God have given us than this right here? Such a powerful gift that helps us to live a better life. What better gift could we share with other people, right? God's word is such an incredible, incredible gift. Let's be thankful for that this Christmas season, amen? So I have a question. Why do we need God's word? Well, if we turn to Hosea chapter Four and verse 6, it tells us something very powerful. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Some people may say, Ignorance is bliss. But is that true? No. Ignorance is not bliss. Knowledge is power. And when we have knowledge, especially the true knowledge of Jesus and his word, it helps us to have a better life. That ignorance, that lack of knowledge, that lack of connection with Jesus hurts us and destroys us. But Jesus wants to give us life and life more abundantly. Amen? 
His way is the best way. He wants us to have a close personal relationship with Him so that you and I can be saved. John chapter 17 verse 3 says, This is life eternal, that they, might know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life comes through knowing Jesus, and we get to know Him better through reading His Word. Point number one, God's word brings healing. Why do we need God's word? It brings healing. It's powerful. Psalms chapter 107, 17 through 20 tells us, it tells us about the story of the children of Israel and how they they would rebel against God and then return unto him. It says, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhors all manner of food and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saves them out of their distresses. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen? God's word has healing power. That's awesome. God's word heals us. It's more powerful than than medicine. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 tells us, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So just as nutrition, healthful food gives us, uh, helps us to have healthy bodies and healthy minds, likewise, this nutrition, this spiritual nutrition, spiritual food helps us to have spiritual health, helps us to grow and to be strong spiritually. Man shall not live by bread alone, said Jesus, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is good nutrition, good food, helps us to grow spiritually. God's word also brings healing to our mind, amen? It's powerful. We can hold on to these promises. When we're struggling with anxiety, with depression, we can claim these beautiful promises that Jesus has given us in his word. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is just one example. There's so many other promises. There's Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's hold on to these promises. They help us to have good physical health and spiritual health and mental health as well. God's word brings healing to our families, amen? It brings healing to our marriages. When we follow the beautiful counsel that God has given us, to treat each other with love and respect as is found in, in uh, especially Ephesians chapter 5 and 6 talking about the family. We have happy families, amen? God's word is powerful. It brings healing in the family. Colossians three sixteen. it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. So let the word dwell in your heart barely, poorly. Is that what it says? No, it says richly, right? Abundantly. We want God's word to dwell in our heart. We want to think about it, meditate it, on it, read it. James chapter 1, verse 21 through 25 says, Therefore lay lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive 
with meekness or humility. The engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Isn't that powerful? God's word is so powerful. When we receive it into our heart, when we accept Jesus, the word of God, into our hearts, it changes us. It brings us salvation. Amen? It's able to save your souls. Let's apply it to our hearts. Let's not just be hearers of the word. Let's be doers. Amen? Next point. God's word cleanses. It cleanses us. This is so awesome. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 3, That we are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. But Jesus has the solution to all of our problems. Jesus says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God is so powerful. His word cleanses us. Psalms 119 verses 9 through 11 says, Wherewithal shall a young man or woman cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. God's word cleanses us. When we take heed to God's word, when we memorize it, when we hide it in our hearts, it gives us strength. It helps us to overcome the attacks of Satan. It helps us to live better spiritual lives. Amen? God's word is so incredibly beautiful and powerful. Jesus said in John 15, verses 1 through 3, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How did Jesus say that you are clean? Through the word as we read the word, as we study it, as we apply it to our heart, it helps to cleanse us, amen? This is such an awesome thing. And through studying the Bible, through reading it, we can have a closer connection with Jesus, just like as a a branch is connected to the vine and then bears fruit. When we study God's word, it connects us to Jesus and his Holy Spirit, and you and I bring forth good fruit, that fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's awesome. God's word cleanses us, just like Jesus said. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It's like water. It cleanses us. It's like taking a shower when we read the Bible. And it is essential, my friends, for our spiritual journey, for our spiritual growth, that every day we dive into God's word. Every day, dive into God's word. And it helps to cleanse us. It helps to wash us clean. Peter talks about this, saying, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides in you. So as we study God's word, as we read it, it's part of that being born again experience. It's part of that daily baptism. When we read it, it cleanses us. It washes us clean. Amen? God's word is powerful. It's awesome. God's word truly is powerful. Mark chapter 13, 31. I love this verse. It's a great memory text. 
just inverse of each other. Mark 13, and then you flip it around 31. So it's easy to remember. Mark 13, 31. Where is it found? Mark 13, 31. It says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's awesome. Praise God. His word is powerful. Heaven and earth will pass away. The Bible says that the atmosphere and the the earth will be burned up and all the works that are therein. But God's word will stand forever. My friends, this is so awesome, so powerful. We have in this world natural disasters. We have earthquakes and things that man make come to nothing. But praise God, there's something that we can stand on that's more sure than the ground that we're standing on. Amen? We can depend on God's word more than the ground we're standing on. This earth sometimes gives way. Earthquakes happen. Buildings collapse. Uh, terrible things happen. But God's word is something we can depend on. Just like Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Praise God. We can trust in God's word more than the ground we're standing on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse, chapter 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is incredibly powerful. It's like a two-edged sword. And we want to let Jesus have access into our hearts. We want to let the word of God have access into our hearts. And like a surgeon cuts out the deadly cancer, we want Jesus, through his word, to cut out the deadly cancer of sin. Amen? Ephesians chapter 6, 17, it says, talking about the arm of God, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. God's word is powerful. The Bible says it's a weapon, a powerful weapon. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. I remember one time I was uh, going door-to-door -door in Las Vegas in a pretty bad neighborhood. And um, I remember talking to these, these people and, and they're saying, um, hey, do you have a gun in your pocket? And I said, no, I don't. I have something better than a gun. And <laughs> I had my pocket Bible, and, and they laughed. Uh, but this is better, amen? God's word is more powerful. It helps to change our lives. It helps to change us to be like Jesus. It, it brings salvation, everlasting life, amen? It's better than any other weapon. God's word is awesome. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, Jesus pulled out what weapon? The scriptures, the word of God, it is written. It is written, Jesus says. And so the Bible is a powerful, powerful weapon that you and I can use every single day to help us to live a better life and to help us overcome temptation. Next point. God's word gives light. Right now, we are living in the last days of earth's history. There's so much darkness. There's so much sadness, atrocities, so many lies all around us. But God's word gives us light. It gives us joy and peace in the midst of this turmoil. Psalms chapter 1, 19, verses 130 says, The entrance of your words 
gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. God's word brings light. It is so awesome. Just like the sun gives us light and it helps us to to be able to go about our our day and not stumble on on the things around us. Uh, It helps us to have joy. It helps us to not get depressed as much. God's word is light and it helps us. It guides us and directs us. Psalms 119.105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is so awesome. As we study God's word, as we read it, it helps and guides us. It says, okay, don't go here. You're going to fall off a cliff if you go there. (laughs) Uh, Don't go over here. You'll stumble over this rock. God's word helps us. It guides us just like a flashlight, just like a lamp. In Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 through 20, it says, When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Shall not a people seek unto their God from the living to the dead? We are living in an age of spiritualism, of witchcraft, and all these false doctrines are being taught But in the midst of all these deceptions, Jesus shows us his beautiful, beautiful truth, his beautiful light. He says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. This is so beautiful. The law and the testimony was the written word that they had at that point in Isaiah's day. Likewise for us, According to the Bible, if it doesn't speak according to this word, it's because it's not true. God has given us his word so that we can be guided through the midst of the darkness of these last days. Let's treasure that light, amen? Let's accept that light. Jesus loves us so much. He's not left us in darkness. All those lies we have around us, we're living in the last days, but Jesus has given us that beautiful light. Let's accept it. Let's treasure it. Let's study God's word daily with prayer, asking for his Holy Spirit to guide us, and he will guide us. That word is powerful. Let's read it, study it every day. God's word is so awesome. Time is running out, my friends. We're living in the last days of earth's history. We don't know exactly when Jesus is going to come, but we know he's coming soon. We need to get ready. Let's study our word. Let's study the Bible daily to get to know Jesus, to have a personal, close personal relationship with him. Let's hide his word in our hearts so that we can be barricaded against the temptations of Satan. What better Christmas gift could we have? What better gift could we have than God's word? A light to our feet, a lamp into our path. It helps us overcome sin and Satan. It helps us to have happy families. God's word is awesome. Let's read it, amen? I want you to pull out your bulletins. Inside, there's an insert right here. Book at a time, Bible reading plan. I want to give a challenge to you guys. This year, let's read through the Bible. Um, This is a, a really cool reading plan that I found and Jesus is really coming soon and we need to get into God's word. And so I encourage you, study God's word daily. And uh, I encourage everyone to go through this reading plan. But even if you can't go through this reading plan, I I still beg of you to just read God's word, study it. 
no matter how little or, or much you can study, please study God's word. This is a nice reading plan. It's a good guide. And I encourage us to go through that. But even if this seems too hard for you um, or you can't do it for some reason, please just study God's word. And uh, also, for this plan, just to make it a little easier, I encourage you, if you can't read it, but maybe you have a little time when you're getting ready in the morning or when you're uh, driving to work, I encourage you, to listen through the Bible. It's really easy to listen to the Bible through uh, different apps on the phone or you can get maybe a CD in your car. And I encourage you to listen through that. Um, Some of my favorite Bible apps are Takarta Bible or Bible.is. In Bible.is, you can listen to it in different languages or different versions. Um, And so I encourage you to read God's Word. Amen? Amen. God's word is so powerful. It changes our lives. It's a light to our feet, a lamp unto our path. It's awesome. It brings us healing. It's powerful. It helps to cleanse us from sin and bring us closer to Jesus. So if it's your desire to read God's word daily and to apply it to your heart, I invite you to stand with me as we pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your word that's so powerful. It's the lamp to our feet and the light into our path. Lord, thank you so much for it. Please forgive us for when we haven't treasured it when we haven't read it and applied it to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to treasure your word. Thank you so much for that incredible gift that you have given us. I ask, Lord, that you would help us uh, this next year to read it faithfully, to read it every day, to apply it to our heart, to share it with those around us. Thank you, Lord, for everyone here. I ask that you'd bless them and their families. Please continue to keep them safe. Lord, protect us from evil. Protect us from Satan. Thank you, Lord, that you're coming soon. Please guide us and direct us. Thank you so much for your love for us and thank you that you have promised to supply all of our needs and you promised that you who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it and to the day of Christ Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name and according to his will we pray.